Cake has dedicated her entire working life to studying the emotional undercurrents that connect people to people and people to brands. So this is how we see gratitude, right? Come world, give me that gratitude, give me that wonderful feeling. I want to take it in and I want to take it all for myself. And my argument is, I think we should turn gratitude into a verb, not a noun. So let's not keep it as a feeling on its own, but let's gift that gratitude forward. It's a picture of my mom and I. <laughs> uh, my mom and I are very, very close. And I kept thinking to myself that I don't want a time to come where I lose my mom and I feel like things are left unsaid. And I sat down and I wrote a living eulogy for her because I thought, you know, I didn't get a chance to say those things to my dad that I would have said at his eulogy, so I'm going to write this for my mom so she knows it today. So I sat down and I wrote, I wrote, I wrote, and then I took it to my mom. So she's, let's just imagine, you know, she's cooking in the kitchen, the kids are playing, and I'm really excited. I'm like, I want to read this to you. So she says, okay, go ahead and read it. So I'm like reading it and I'm pouring my heart out. And at the end, she goes, that's really nice, Keika, thank you. And I was like, okay. She knows. She knows. So the following year, just before her birthday, I'm talking to my mom and my brother. We're at home at, at her house. And I say to my brother, you know, I have a real sense of peace in my heart that my mom knows the impact she had on me and, and you know what, because I wrote that eulogy for her. <laughs> to which my mom says, eulogy? <laughs> what eulogy? <laughs> So I'm like, I don't know if she just wasn't paying attention because she was cooking and she was busy and she placated me. Like, that's so nice. She didn't remember. So we made a pact and I said, okay, I'm going to email you the eulogy again. You have to promise me you're going to read it. And then we're going to have a conversation afterwards where you tell me that you've read it. Because I was elated. She said, I wanted to jump up and scream out to the world. I wanted to dance. I wanted to just run and sing. She said, I had absolutely no idea that I had that kind of impact on you. Wow. I see my mom every day. I tell her I love her every day. I've made it a point to try to say thank you every day. But the thing is that we are on autopilot. And so when she read that, she said to me that she felt like that was the greatest birthday gift that anybody could have ever gotten. And this is how my mom said she felt. <laughs> and quite truthfully, when I looked at her reaction, that's how I felt. You know, it was it was like one of those things where I thought this is this is powerful beyond what I can ever even imagine. And what it taught me was that you know, we tend to talk about legacy, like when somebody dies, we're going to celebrate this legacy, something's going to live afterwards. But there are all kinds of imprints that people leave, leave on us every day. But we are culturally programmed to just keep it to ourselves. You know, the practice of gratitude um, so far, which has been a worldwide movement, has been every day I'm going to write in my journal. Today I am grateful for Linda for allowing me to come and do this. Today I'm grateful for my kids. Tomorrow I'm grateful for. But Linda doesn't know it if it's sitting in my journal. And Linda may not even know the kind of impact that she's had on me. And if I don't express that, how is she going to know? What grade would you give your organization in terms of how employees feel appreciated for the impact they're having at work. Has <laughs> everybody done it? Everybody put oh, we've C's. all done C's. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> this tells us we have some work to do. An undercurrent of change, which takes some time, but it can be really powerful. And it, it got me thinking to when we talk about employee engagement. Who are the employees that perform the best for your organization? One was that they want to make their boss proud or they don't want to let their boss down. You know, my, do my boss believes in me and I need to get this done because if I don't, I'm going to let him or her down. Number two, I crave and I strive for more. So if you want employees to be really engaged, you've got to find the ones that are truly passionate about the work that they're doing. So I think sometimes we hire for skill and not for passion. Sometimes we hire uh, people that don't have the, 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 the desire to strive. And so that might be in our job descriptions, for example, when we're hiring, one of the things we want to look for. Do employees feel like it's possible? And that often means, do I feel supported? And quite often, and the breaking point is with the direct manager that's working for them. And then number four, I know I'm going to be supported. You know, there's like a culture where I've got your back. When employees come into work, we want them to feel those four things. I've done a lot of research around this and I can tell you that we are sort of on the cusp of something that hasn't been done yet.